Uh, Vic, are you with us? Yes. Can you hear me? Can you hear well, you me? We can okay? hear you. Thank you. Yes. What have you? What do you yes. bring to the table? Yes, I have. Uh, just a second. I have an echo. What? What should I do? Uh, mute Blog TV is probably the best thing to do. I'm going to close the Blog TV. Okay, that should help. Yes. Having head having headphones as well may may help, but you sound better already. Yes, uh, if everything uh, is okay, we could uh, proceed. Everything yes, is, let's proceed. Yes, yes. Uh, I recently saw uh, a video of yours, a video of a show actually, for which I sent an answer, and I was an uh, answer, a question, and I was curious to see if uh, anybody has brought that up. And doing which, that which, show, which which show were you talking about? Uh, the one with the the magic sandwich, I think. Yeah, which which one though? We do it every two weeks. The first one, I think. The very first one we did, what, two years ago? No, no, uh, a month ago. A month ago, okay. Yes, and uh, at one point of that show, it, it was brought the argument that Christianity has created the modern science, and because it was, of course, an atheist show, it was brought the weakest possible argument that Christ the Christian Can I, can I just pause you there? Because I know that that's what you wrote in the... Uh, yes, contact yes. request. Can you yes. just explain? Because I don't recall this. Can you just explain um, what, who said? Uh, I, do, I do not remember exactly who said. But somebody but was saying that Christianity was responsible for modern science. Is, is or that? the impact of Christianity has brought modern science, something like that. And okay. somebody answered uh, the argument with uh, Newton uh, that Newton was Christian, and so on, and so why. I mean, it doesn't really matter what religion he had. And because this is a very interesting uh, subject, I want to bring three arguments as a historian. I could bring nine, but in your uh, show it's... Uh, can, we, can we just take them one at a time? Give us your best one. Uh, no, the problem is that I, uh, if we're going to debate each one of them, we are not going to, uh, how to say, uh, end them all. Yes, that's why so, I said give us them one at a time and start with your best one. Yes, well, my best the one, <coughs> uh, number one, is the desacralization of the universe. Each one of these arguments was put forward by one uh, uh, other scientist or historian. This one was mentioned by uh, Mircea Eliade. Mircea Eliade was uh, a Romanian professor of religion, the first one who <laughs> Sorry about the cough, uh, who analyzed religion from a secular uh, perspective, and he had the first encyclopedia of uh, religion. And uh, the idea is very simple. Before Christianity, behind every tree was an elf, be be behind every flower was a fairy, uh, rivers were sacred, the sky was sacred, all the natural phenomena were uh, in their self sacred, the thunder, the earthquake, and so on. Uh, if you want to make a trip at the sea, you should uh, at least make, make, make a sacrifice to Poseidon, especially a white bull, and so on, and so on. And this is uh, why a great invention such as uh, the Vose of Huron of Alexandria or those of Singh Dynasty do not really uh, matter to this word that <coughs> was basically a magical word. The explanation for everything was magic. We have the example of uh, Asigoras, for example, whom uh, he was almost killed. He ended up exiled. Uh, because he uh, stated that the uh, sun that everybody in his city was worshipping as Helios was in fact a ball uh, of v fire. V Vikro, can I can I interrupt you briefly? Yes. Um, so the point that you're putting is putting forward is that Christianity is responsible for modern science. Is that yes the point that you're advocating? Yes. Uh, I, I have to say, say, say Vikro, uh, given the time, can you can you sort of like? <clears throat> Uh, now, let, let, let me, let me ask, the maybe to put in question here, DPR, that if you think that Christianity is responsible for modern science, then we've had Christianity in Europe for about 2,000 years. Yes. Why did it wait for 1,500 years before inventing modern science? Let me, tell, let me ask you a question. What everybody else has well, done? Well, maybe, maybe it would just be more expedient to just answer the question. Uh, now, modern science has progressed. There are several impacts 
that. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, I'm both, sorry, Vic wrote, uh, that's not answering the question. It was a fairly uh, sorry, straightforward uh, question. You are doing this all the time when somebody is calling you. Uh, I, I do not even finish my argument and you are putting a question inside the you, argument. And you are asked a question, will you answer it? Yes, it's very simple. There are several stages that boasted the progress of science, such as the invention of printing and the invention of communication, such as radio and so on. But to reach that point, uh, you need to go to several other stages. And the desacralization that I'm trying to explain right now to you, and you are not let me finish, it's the most important. Go on, we'll let you finish, but please keep it as short as possible. Yes, so uh, the problem with the desacralization, as Mircea Eliade basically uh, put it, is that Christianity was the first religion who came with the idea that God is not of this world. He is not part of this world, he lives outside this world. The first Christian thinkers actually came with the idea that God uh, just imparted to matter uh, some laws and you know, basically everything uh, uh, gone from there under his guidance. So the desacralization, the desacralization uh, has happened both in East and in the West. In the West has gone uh, to fanatism, let's say, to things like killing witches that I'm sure that you guys know all about. So uh, all this process of desacralization has brought uh, the Europe and no other place in the world to a place when people begin to ask how natural phenomena actually work. Uh, they try to understand the law of God. How I'm God pretty sure the Greeks had this fairly well nailed down before Christianity. No, no, no. The example of Asigoras is crystal clear. I mean, they almost kill the guy for saying that the sun is not uh, 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 God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But Vic, 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 one, I mean, one second, Thunder, please. Vic, um, we're, we're being as patient as we can with you. I'm sorry, um, I'm not interested in hearing a 15-minute ramble. You were asked a specific point, and you're not really getting to it. Why, why is Christianity, I, and I know you'll probably say, well, I was getting there. Uh, just please, cut to the chase. Why is Christianity necessary? You surely must be able to frame this answer in a, in a yes. couple of sentences. Yes, because only in because only Christianity has brought to uh, society some uh, principle who has brought us today to this. Uh, now, uh, just uh, let's uh, well, hear an the argument. I mean, I, I, I don't think I actually. I, that let's didn't make let's any hear sense the argument of Thunderfoot. The argument of Thunderfoot is that without Christianity, we would uh, colonize the universe. Uh, and the question is, who stopped? I'm sorry, yeah. if you're going to come China. up with ridiculous statements like that, I will just shut you off. Uh, uh, where yes. did you get that from? from Stick to the point time. or you're done. Yes, uh, if I could pass to the second uh, argument, if this is not uh, okay for you. No, no, no Vic, Vic Rowe, can we just have a really brief explanation of why you think that Christianity actually led to modern science when the observations that we have is that Christianity has been in Europe for 2,000 years and yet we've only really had about 300 years of science. I mean, if Christianity was directly responsible for all of, all of this, then why after Jesus dies don't you get the printing press, radio technology, internet and so on within uh, a, few, uh, a few, few hundred years? Why is there a thousand years of essentially nothing happening? Um, before uh, things start moving forwards. Why do you get things like the Spanish Inquisition um, threatening to torture and kill scientists? I mean, uh, I, 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 can, can we just have a brief uh, explanation yes, yes, yes. of those I, points? I, I get you there. Because it took a lot of time to desacralize the universe. People were still thinking that... Can you explain yeah, you, what are that you means? Saying that Desecularizing the universe. I'm sorry, explain what that means. Because this uh, is just a banal diatribe God, at the moment. God was basically expelled, as Michel Yade put it, it was expelled from the universe. Everything became inert matter that could be... Hang, hang on, God, God was expelled from the universe and this is because of Christianity? Yes. Yes, in Christianity well, 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 we don't well, pray hang to on. We don't pray isn't, to trees. Isn't expelling God from the universe what atheists do? No, that was uh, what Christianity did in the first century, where people think that every rock was protected by a god. 
Can I just pause you there because I want to take a, a vote from uh, people in the chat. Uh, we are sometimes criticised for cutting off um, what we consider to be deluded religious people. Sometimes um, we are criticised for uh, having them on for too long. Thumbs up, thumbs down. Do you want this call to end and move on to the next caller? Let's move on to the next I caller. I have a second. Bye. Okay. Uh, I, I'm, I'm, I don't know. I mean, obviously we're going to get criticised for cutting them off. Um, to me, there, there was just absolutely no content to his it's, ramblings. That was, that was my main point, problem, is that... He didn't really seem to have a point. Uh, the, was it? Was he really saying that Christianity removed God um, from Europe? And that's as with all why... his ramblings, as when it, as well, well, he was on the last time he was on this show, I have no under well, no understanding fair, let, what he was saying. Let, let me let me represent an argument I think he would make, uh, which is that. Christianity created or, or, or imagined a material world where the spiritual was not interfering, was, was not as interventionist. And the, the sort of deistic leanings of the early church made possible a predictable, regulated universe that was not capricious or arbitrary. It was based on some laws set in stone. I mean that that is the idea that that sort of materialist idea, but that's that, not really Christianity, you know. The, no, this whole <laughs> with miracles and uh, you know God can do anything. I think it was. I think what Vic is confusing is that he's imagining that that trend towards materialism was an outgrowth of religion or, or Christianity, and specifically, I actually think it is the exact opposite, that materialism, as it flourished in Europe, became, you know, enculturated into uh, the Christianity that existed there. And that's why the Renaissance Christian countries had a rebirth of knowledge and interest that, that the Greeks started off. The Greeks also believed in a very orderly universe, and that's what made them such useful scientists. They just didn't have the principle of empiricism that, that led to modern science. I, I, I think I understand what Vic Rowe was saying. He, he's, he's talking about the, the culture that created, that gave birth to um, modern experimental science, but it was in fact a trend that came up independently of Christianity. It just happened to be more compatible there than it did in other places. Um, well, I think you're being very charitable if you understand I'm trying his to message. Be. But um, <laughs> given the time, let's, uh, let's move on uh, but to perhaps a more cogent uh, comment or question. Uh, sky's the limit. Welcome to the show. Hello, everybody. Can you hear me? Perfectly. Very well. Excellent. Very good. Uh, excellent chat and debate um, this evening, gentlemen. Uh, thank you much for that. Going back, I wanted to DPR um, to the original team. Besides that um, last chap, I'm going to mute um, Blog TV because it's, uh, I think, causing some sound interference. But anyway, what I wanted to say, it, it, when the initial theme was about research for science in terms of academic university and all that, uh, interesting. Um, I wanted to move it on, DPR. The idea that I was thinking of is from a, a quote, sadly, that I heard some years ago, referenced something that we would all have in common, Carl Sagan's Cosmos, and it's okay, it's not um, university academia, but the fact that, for example, someone said that Cosmos would never be made today, um, you know, because nobody would finance it. Um, hang on, let me I, just stop you there. Isn't yeah. Cosmos being remade with Neil deGrasse Tyson? Yes, that's, this is true. I hear rumblings of that thunder. Um, but it's just that, no, I wanted to reflect that thunder in, in terms of um, sort of just, I know it was um, a singular argument in terms of university research. I can tell you from a European perspective, and I don't mean to be partisan at all, um, for example, where I work based in the European institutions, um, regardless of what people you know, think politically and all the rest of it, the European Commission and the European Parliament, which I, where I work, um, it, I had, I'm not directly a, a associated with the R&D um, committee, but I can only tell you um, that compared to across the Atlantic, Europe has invested hugely um, in R&D and all the uh, science spectra. I mean, the obvious examples being the European Space Agency, CERN, which we 
we're very proud of and all the rest of it. Um, so I, I just think that it, when we have this general argument, if I may, I mean, it's just that we have to break it down between the US led the way years ago and, um, and obviously shuttle being retired and all that. But I mean, Europe is plowing along and so are the Chinese and others. So I think we have to be careful. Um, the elections are coming up and I don't want to do politics here, but it's just that I think it's a US question about how much finance they're putting into it because Europe is in no way lagging behind. So I'm kind of but there's a difference between Europe. So I, I, I currently coordinate a, a, a 11 partners. It's actually in total, it's 25 partners, um, initial training network. So there's mm -hmm. a big difference between, first of all, there's a big difference between Europe and the national funding bodies, as you know. Absolutely. So you can talk about the UK funding and then you can talk about the UK funding nationally and um, European funding coming into the UK, which the UK, as you probably know, does pretty well. Um, so there's, that's one distinction. The other important distinction, the really important distinction, is between the European Research Council, which is an absolute exemplar of how research should be funded, where the focus is only on scientific quality, and the plethora, and it really is a plethora of different um, funding um, agencies, different funding streams, funding schemes. Um, you know, the, 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 the grant that I wrote, the grant that the proposal that funds the current initial training network was in total something like, when you added in all the letters of support, etc., something like 100 pages. Mm. You know, that's, that's yeah. a huge investment of time when the success rate is 7%. 7%. Well, I'm, yeah. But, yeah, I'm fit. Well, Philip, I've enjoyed listening to you this evening. I would say to you, and I'm not taking away, you're the man on the ground, in terms of the UK, and I must stress that, because remember, and you know very well, Philip, that you cannot divorce any of these arguments besides general budgets of government funding that comes out, but it is a singular thing in terms of the UK. Now, I'm Irish, and I know this very well what's going on in Ireland, but I have to, I am compelled to see it on a European level. So, I'm very, while I'm very sympathetic, to the, the structure that has been evolved, if you will, in the United Kingdom. I can only say that in terms of a Europe as a project, and again, I don't want to trip over landmines of the political thing. I'm not UKIP, for example. What, what I'm saying to you is that there's a general positivity and a huge investment all over Europe, from really from Spain, Germany, which, whatever. I agree, which is under threat. And you'll probably know there's a petition at the moment with regard to how that, you know, the research funding. Um, mm. And obviously there's been huge... Um, issues in the in the UK of late with regard to of, of late of the la, over the last few days with regard to how this particular coalition government and the shadow cabinet and the Labour Party in general are mm -hmm. dealing with you. So it's a huge issue in the UK. So mm -hmm. certainly in terms of the UK we're not all one big happy family with regard to Europe. There are many people who um, uh, would very much like to see UK disconnected from Europe. So I don't yeah, want to make I, I, know. I know, and I know, I don't want to go there. As I said, Phil, I, I just what I'm saying to you is that if you think that one of the most successful European projects that ever was the Erasmus project, yeah. which is exchange of students, including the science faculties, you know. So yeah. what, what I'd love to do. So, uh, I, I'm fully behind. I'm fully behind the type of integration that the, the, the European framework programs have given us. That it's, it's wonderful, but the problem is there is far too, and you know this because this has been petition upon petition, and scientists mm. have told, told um, Brussels this time and time again, there is yeah. far too much bureaucracy. There is far too much, you know, when I have to map out my deliverables on a month by month basis, yeah. it's not science. What mm. you're expecting from us, um, or what Brussels is expecting from us, is product development, is application driven, Yep. And again, I've got to make that distinction between the European Research Council and all the other framework programs. But th we could spend uh, months discussing this. I think yeah, we okay. could. Uh, and thank you very much, Sky's Limit. I'm going to move right. on. I'm terribly sorry. Um, so, as, as always happens, at the end of the show, we get a rush of people who want to uh, call in. Um, I'm going to take one last call. Up. Um, Phil, I know that it's just after 10. Are you happy to stay I with us? I'm around for another while. I'm really enjoying this, Richard. Really enjoying this. Oh, well, we'll have you back then. Okay. Um, Let's have a, 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 as I bring in the next caller, let's have a thumbs up if you would like to see uh, Phil appear on a future show. And there's a lag, which is why no one's actually put a thumbs up yet. Um, still waiting. Oh, yeah, there we go. The thumbs up are coming in. But uh, hopefully we are joined by what will be, I think, our last caller um, of the show, uh, El Nino, who I understand was on the show... Uh, few months ago and I cut him off because I think I thought he was a troll 
Um, but he wasn't. And I think I thought he was a troll because he was arguing for creationism, but I stand to be corrected. El Nino, are you with us? Yes, hello, I can hear you. Hi, how are you doing? I'm doing good, how are you? Very well, thank you. I, I apologize, I can't remember the exact details of the last appearance that you referred to. Um, it was last May, and I came on for a minute, and the talk, I just basically introduced what I wanted to talk about, and you just kicked me off very early, so... Yeah, I, 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 I apologize for that. I, I, I have a tendency to do that now and again. I, I, I do apologize. The floor is yours, sir. How can we help you? Um, right, well, I was just talking to someone in the chat there before um, I came on, and would discussing abortion be relevant to the show? Um, not really, but if, not that's, really. If, if that's your main point. Uh, I, what what did you call in about the last in, in May? Was it not? Are you are you the um, creationist? That I'm um, yes, I am. Yes. Right. I think that's probably more relevant to talk about that. Right. Okay. Well, I, I, I wasn't intending to talk about that today, but since you're giving me the chance now, I will. Um, yeah. Um, so, like the first question I asked last time, obviously, I'm just, maybe everyone in here, like no one else in here, is um, is a creationist or are you? I think that's. A, uh, a, I'm alone here. I think that's a very good understanding. None of us are. No. Right. Okay. And, um, and, 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 and let's just clarify a few points then before we go any further. So, by creationist, um, you are a believer that a god. I'm guessing the Christian God created everything. Um, I am a Christian, but when arguing this, I don't bring any specific religion into it. Okay. When when did this creation event happen? Um, I don't know. Like I, mean, I, I, I don't know. Like, I obviously can't say a year. No, no. no but how, roughly, how long was it? Millions of years? Thousands of years? Billions of years? Order of magnitude. It could be billions. It could okay. be thousands. Uh, to you're me, like young be, Earth. Sorry, you're not young Earth creationist, which is. You know, or at least moving up the, <laughs> the ladder of um, possibilities. Right, but okay, so it could be billions, but um, uh, you say you're a Christian as well. Do you believe in the contents of the Bible? For example, Garden of Eden, Adam of Eve, Noah's flood. Do I take that literally? Mm -hmm. um, yes. Okay. Noah's flood. When did Noah's flood happen? Yeah. Um, you put me on the spot here. You're going to have to. Right, well, okay. Well, was it before well, well, or after let's, the let's pyramid? Forget, forget about when it happened. Just tell us what evidence do you rely on to support your view that there was a global flood in which Noah took animals onto an ark? Right. Well, we're getting off track, but I know there's been scientific discoveries that have been made um, that have contradicted Noah's flood, but also I've also heard of some scientific discoveries made that. Apparently, they found the wood of Noah's Ark. I heard briefly about that. Do you know how many times that's happened? Um, no. I'd say at about 20 or 30 six. times over the last yeah. couple of hundred years. We yeah, get a Noah's even in flood. the last hmm. 10 years, I, I know there have been at least six cases where there was a press release from you know, creation science, and, and they contradict themselves. Uh, saying that there, there's the keel of a boat on the top of a mountain somewhere, um, and that you know ar archaeological dating puts it a certain period of time, but of course that doesn't really mean anything. I, the fact is that there's wood on the top of a mountain, uh, and that it's a piece of wood that that could have been part of a a long piece of wood. It could have been anything. Um, what, uh, what uh, I'm Alina, interested. I don't, I don't want to put you on the spot, but I, I think maybe this would be a constructive, um, slightly shift. Of topic rather than asking for the details but my point is this that uh, I ha obviously have beliefs and a lot of those are taken on trust you know I, I, I am not sufficiently scientifically minded to be able to prove the speed of light or um, mm -hmm. maybe I can find out the um, gravitational constant uh, with a tape measure or whatever, but th these are things I do take on trust in the same way I, I take um, someone who is a medical expert uh, on trust when I go to the doctor when I'm ill. So I accept that to a degree I am relying on authority, but what I don't understand is what 
what you are relying on because I do not see any credible evidence uh, to support any of the views that you seem to hold. And this is what I find curious. Why right. is it that you can hold these views right. on, but, such, but, on such flimsy evidence? But a lot, but a lot of unions have like a great faith in science and you know, science is always changing. Like I say this all the time. I've, so this before, like in a thousand years now, people could look back and this generation has been ignorant in comparison. Would you, would you please, please, would you please make the difference between advancing and changing? Science advances; it doesn't keep changing. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. You want to use that word? Yeah. Okay, it advances and advances. In a thousand years, it'll be way more advanced than it is now. These today's theories could be pr well proven but wrong. That's the absolute antithesis. Of your of 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 any religious viewpoint, where you have your rules, you have your um, thinking set down in stone, tablets of stone, sometimes literally. Um, I, I just don't. I've never understood the, how that that argument tallies with the idea that science changes. Science definitely changes, and indeed, Richard Feynman. Um, was asked for a definition, a one sentence definition of science and I, I love this definition and I, I give it to the first year undergraduate students every year is science is the belief in the, the ignorance of experts. So it's not received wisdom, it's about kicking away, chipping away, questioning everything, the absolute antithesis of any, um, any religion. So how, how, I just don't see how you square those viewpoints. Uh, another one of the reasons is, um, I've said this before as well, um, the watchmaker analogy, um, the fact that the universe is so intelligently... I'm sorry, before you move on to that, this is another thing that I find deeply frustrating with the likes of yourself. As soon as one contradictory argument is put forward to his point that you have raised, you do not address it. You just simply move on to another point. Why don't you actually address the points that are being made to you? Is it possible that you're trolling us, El Nino? Uh, I'm, I'm not trolling at all. Like, I mean, you, you dismissed me too early last time trolling, but uh, in terms of Noah's Ark stuff, I didn't respond to that because that's, I'm just no interest in talking about that. I don't really know much about it. And all right, just, you want to talk about a watchmaker? Go on. Wait, wait, wait. Okay. Deep, let, let me, real quick. The, the, the difference, and I think this is so important, is that <laughs> science responds to the evidence. We, we had no preconception of what the speed of light would have been. And, and there were 100 years of experiments trying to measure it. But that was because we really had no idea. We were, we were dependent on the accuracy of our instruments to tell us more about the real world. And then our theories were adjusted to match that. That is the power of science, is that it, it begins with empirical observation and no preconceptions. And it approaches each issue skeptically so that the evidence has primacy. In the case of, of religion, we're looking for timbers on the tops of mountains. Or religious scientists might be looking for evidence of Noah's Ark because it was in a book. Right? We don't start from the empirical evidence. We begin hunting. We begin hunting for something to confirm what we've already decided to believe is true. So rather than drawing from the real world, and yes, that does change because our, our methods change and our instruments change, we start with the reality and derive from it useful information. In the case of religious belief, and this is why it's the antithesis of science, we begin with a conclusion and we work our way backwards, searching for the evidence that can get us there, rather than truly exploring what, what exists. And that's why, no matter how hard they try, no one can start from the Bible and do science. Because the Bible is a, is a book full of conclusions. And anything you do from that point on will no longer be science. Let's give El Nino an opportunity to respond to that point before he talks about watchmaking. Okay, uh, I actually wasn't watchmaking. It was the watchmaker analogy. Maybe you misheard me. Uh, sorry. Do you want to respond right. to what Concordant said before you move on to that point? Um, not really. Okay. But I'll, I'll do something to say. Um, sorry, you, wanted, you wanted to use a watchmaker did you, analogy. Did you going to find this hard? I'm sorry, okay, well, 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 it's going to find this point even harder to dispute. Um, you know, if, how, how can you dispute the, the, pa <laughs> the passion of the Christ? Right? They have clear archive footage. 
Okay. Ah, uh, Oliver. Don't know what that got out. That was Oliver. There we are. It's uh, 50 minutes over the time that uh, we would uh, supposedly stop. Uh, I'm not minded to take any more callers. Uh, let's just conclude on that because it, it, to me it is something that I uh, touched upon before and I always find a mystery how people can be satisfied in an answer that I do not consider to be an answer. God did it. It's not an answer. It has no explanatory powers at all. It's, it's just hollow, vacuous nonsense. But. Philip? Yeah, that was a, a bit of an... Um anticlimactic note to end on, wasn't it? But um, uh, it's strange, he just came, because his arguments were so poorly thought out, and you know, to bring up the bloody watchmaker analogy, um, is when well, it's been... Well, deal with that, well, I mean, let's, 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 let me play devil's advocate with you for a moment, um, Phil. I mean, you, you, you talked about this absolute nonsense that, you know, everything that we see, all the billions of galaxies that we see in the universe, all came from a quantum fluctuation. I mean, that's obviously nonsense, isn't it? But not only that, but we also see that all of these uh, constants of nature uh, are so accurately designed to ensure that life can exist on our planet. So, come on, except, how do you answer that question? Except or not, let's deal with the second point. This fine-tuning anthropic principle argument really gets on my nerves, because if you look at those, and Weinberg's looked at some of those with regard in particular to certain energy levels uh, within carbon and within different elements, this fine tuning just falls down because it's like looking for the golden ratio um, everywhere. There are so, you know, it's argued that you can see it throughout so much architecture and so many um, different pieces of art. And in fact, you know, it's again uncertainty. It's an error bar, so if you have a large enough error bar, you can, you know, you can read into that whatever you like. So fine tuning, I don't see the existence of fine tuning. And in fact, if you look at the, the data in enough detail, that, that, you know, it collapses. It really is like a house of cards. Um, what I find, what I, I, I'm giving up playing devil's advocate now. Okay? I just can't do it well enough. Um, what I find extraordinary is the <laughs> idea that fine tuning. Uh, that we see allows life to exist on an average planet or the crust, a small part of the crust of an average planet orbiting an average star and everything else out there. Precisely. Yeah. Uh, it just is nonsense. Concordance mm -hmm. or thunder, who wants to chip in on this one before we wrap up? Yeah, you know, I, th I think, was it, was it Feynman? We, we've really hit him hard today, but um, his comments about it, it's out of proportion. You know, this idea of a, a desert god that appeared to one group of people for exactly. one very brief period of time, it, given the vastness, you know, these people had no, no idea of the scale of the universe, it's very hard to even find that in proportion to the kinds of things that we observe in the universe. Uh, if there were going to be a god, he would be a god of hydrogen. <laughs> he would be a god of, of uh, vast interstellar distances and colliding galaxies. The idea he'd also, of a, of he'd a also be incredibly defeated by sorry, iron but he'd, chariots he'd, and he'd, who worried about whether or not Tribe X was on land Y. It's so vastly out of proportion to the reality. He, he would also be a god of utter wasted matter. I mean, what's the point of putting all of these other billions of galaxies out there just so we can look at them and see them shine? The very wasteful God. I, I, that's, so, that, that to me is, is one of the more compelling arguments. Given the vastness of the universe, a God who worries about the fall of a sparrow just doesn't, it doesn't even sort of make sense. There's, there's so much more. There's so much more than uh, religion concerns itself uh, with, yeah, whether or not um, you're eating uh, pork or not. It just seems like the kind of decision that one of the presidential a god of the, at the moment, universe or the uh, multiverse Romney actually believed that would, Jesus would is going care. to come back um, and he's going to rule for a thousand years after he split a mountain in Israel somewhere. And he's going to rule from both Israel and Missouri. And I'm just sort of 
What I'm stand, find, what I find the, curious the, the, about this, the, the man looking to run the most powerful country in the world, arguably the most powerful country in the world, believes in that sort of level of voodoo. And this is something I want to pick up on, from you, if I may, because what I found curious is that religion does not seem to have been touched upon at all in the presidential campaign, and the concordance may have an insight into why that may be, seeing as he's an American. But Wait, are, are you really uh, asking me why, why wasn't yeah, it touched why, on? Yeah. Well, because Romney wants to downplay his religion, because if, if it... If we really explain, you know, most people consider it um, a, a race between a, a crazy polygamist Mormon. That's what most people think of with this Mormon thing. And Magic Obama Hunter, is obviously a secret Muslim. I mean, right? That's that's what everybody pretty much believes. I, I mean, I don't know. I don't have any further insight than that. Neither candidate uh, wants to talk much about it. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm going to wrap it up now. I'm going to go back first to Phil for the um, quote that he's just put into the chat. Tell us that one. So I'm a big fan of Frank Zappa. Um, and um, just coming back on, on Concordance's comment about hydrogen, Zappa said that the uh, most plentiful element in the universe actually wasn't hydrogen, it's stupidity, which um, I think is, is classic Zappa. Um, the other thing I love about Zappa is apparently, I'm sure this is apocryphal, but I love it anyway. Um, apparently one of the last things he did before he died was to buy up three companies that supplied Muzak and shut them down. Just great. <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> On that bombshell, uh, we shall bring things to a close. Can I invite everyone, please, that's watching, uh, to give a big thumbs up uh, to our special guest today, uh, Professor Philip uh, Moriarty. Uh, who has agreed to appear on a future show, and we'll certainly be delighted to have him back. Uh, thank you also to Concordance and Thunderfoot, uh, and to all the callers and all those that uh, have watched. And if you're not watching uh, at the moment, uh, Phil, I can assure you, uh, there is a plethora of a thumbs up for you. So thank you very much indeed. Can I just remind people that this will be posted on YouTube, uh, probably within 48 hours. Uh, you'll also be able to access it from our uh, website, magicsandwichshow.com. Um, and that is a useful site to uh, learn about uh, future upcoming events. You can also follow us on uh, Twitter. It's the DPR Jones. And uh, also uh, for those uh, who want to listen to this in uh, audio only, uh, within about 24 hours, uh, there's normally an MP3 file available for download from our website, magicsandwichshow.com. Um, we are also hopefully are going to try again uh, to get iTunes up and running. Uh, someone who knows what they're doing is offered to help, so uh, hopefully that will happen. Uh, but on that note, can I thank everyone, as I say, uh, any last words? Um, Thunderfoot, we'll go Thunderfoot Concordance and then uh, Phil. Um, yeah, don't vote for someone who is insane for president. I mean, preferably vote for oh. someone who is sane, but if you can't vote for someone who is sane, don't vote for someone who is insane. <laughs> uh, what if you don't have a choice? Um, I just want to say uh, good luck to everyone out there who's rebuilding and recovering from Hurricane Sandy. That's all. Thank you. Phil? I'll echo what Concordance said, yeah. Um, yeah, it sort of puts things in perspective, doesn't it? Um, but it's been you know, obviously my, my first time on the Magic Sandwich show. I thoroughly enjoyed it, and yeah, I'd be delighted to come back. Thank you very much indeed, and that gives everyone an opportunity, six minutes, to go and retune to uh, Atheist Experience. But there we go. Thank you very much. We will see you in uh, two weeks' time. Not sure who we'll have on, uh, but I think um, seeing as we've concentrated on science uh, for the last couple of shows, I think we might go back to a little bit of religion bashing. We'll <laughs> see you in two weeks' time. Thank you very much indeed. Oh, and I have to say, terribly sorry, normally I say thank you to Tony at this stage, but um, as I say, Tony had uh, problems with his computer, so Ben took over at the last minute. Ben, thank you very much indeed for your help. On that note, take care.